today we are going to London. Tomorrow we go to Krakow in Poland. So before we go, today is Sunday the 18th of October, which means I'm going to be doing the market breakdown for the team for the week ahead. So everyone in the community from me will get a Sunday market breakdown of all the pairs and all the market analysis that I'm looking at for the week ahead. So let's jump on, do that, and then tonight we'll be catching the flight to London. about two or three people in the whole entire place. Next stop, London. Finally, we can breathe. Just got to the hotel in London, staying at the Sofitel. I think I'm saying that right. Sofitel, Sofitel, I don't know. I actually got an upgrade. I'm not too sure what this means, but I got, got upgraded to fourth floor and the fourth wing. This is really, really disappointing. So this was here waiting for me, and I saw videos of people opening macaroons when they got to this hotel. I opened this, gel, and a face mask. I mean, thank you, I need this, but could have stopped off macaroons. Oh, first question of the Q&A is promised. Hi, follow me if you're interested in Forex. Thanks. Next question, next real question. Let's ignore that one. Where do you want to live in the future? Very good question. That is a question I actually don't know the answer for. At the minute, I love traveling around so much, uh, exploring all new parts of the world that I have never really yet found a place where I would like to say, yeah, okay, I'm gonna live there forever. I've always had the interest in Canada and I think Canada is such a beautiful place. So if someone asked me that question now and I had to make a decision, I would have to say Canada. Whereabouts in Canada? I do not know. I've not been to Canada. I tried to go to Canada, but they didn't let me in. So, <laughs> Canada will be the place if I had to choose anywhere to move right now. Oh, Canada or, I actually recently got my New Zealand citizenship and that's pretty crazy considering I've never even been there. I'm gonna say New Zealand. Sorry Canada, you're going. One time I'll come visit Canada, but yeah, I'm gonna say New Zealand. We've got a few guys out there um, that follow me and watch my stuff and I've connected with you guys. So I would love to come out in the future to New Zealand and live there considering now I've got my citizenship, seeing as I've never even been. It would be rude of me not to even come to the country. So yeah, if I had to live anywhere in the world right now, New Zealand. 5 a.m. Let's go to crack off. Take off the mask, get about to go get the train, go get some coffee, and then hopefully check into the Airbnb. Finally, we made it to crack off. I mean, it'd only be right that we did an apartment tour, so let's have a look around. I've not even looked around yet, but look, we've got a super nice balcony there. Look at that. Oh, nice. Nice, lovely day. Beautiful. And then, this is gonna be the trading setup there. I'm gonna get my laptop and stuff set up pretty soon. So this is the kitchen, and that's upstairs to the bedroom, which is actually pretty cool. What's in here? Nice. Got 
Oh, be careful in here. Oh. Lovely. I'm gonna end up banging my head on that when I get up in the morning. <laughs> the stairs are steep, I need to be careful on these. Wow. So yeah, that's living room, balcony, bedroom, kitchen. Oh, is there a coffee machine? Oh, is that a coffee? Nice. Cool. And then... So, all in all, a very nice place. I haven't even been to explore any of Krakow yet because I've literally just arrived. I just dropped off my stuff. I'm gonna get the training set up first, get the microphone set up, update the team with everything that's going on, and then we will have a look around. So, second Q&A. How much do I make in a day? Firstly, this shouldn't be your main focus. Focusing on the money is what holds back most traders. Having that emotional attachment to the monetary value is what holds people back. So try not to focus so much on how much other people make. Focus on your own journey and think in terms of pips and percentages. Rather than if I just tell you I made a couple of thousand last week. That's completely irrelevant to you because you don't know my account size, you don't know my risk, you don't know any of my plan. So me telling you how much I make is just it's not beneficial for you and rather than focusing on the money you should be focusing on placing good trades because to me placing a really good trade and seeing it play out is a much better reward than seeing me make a couple of hundred thousand not a couple of hundred thousand a couple of hundred to a thousand i wish it was a couple of hundred thousand but yeah that shouldn't be your main focus and i don't set daily goals even weekly or monthly limits on myself i don't like to have them restrictions and start forcing trades saying this month I have to make this much or today my daily goal is to make a thousand pounds. I don't put them restrictions on myself. I simply trade what the market gives me and the opportunities that it allows me to trade. So if you're thinking in terms of daily, weekly or monthly goals, you're just gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna hinder your results and you're gonna hold yourself back. Rather than focusing on having daily goals or weekly goals, focus on gaining consistent profit because that's what it's all about. That's what's down to your success as a trader, having that consistent profits. So we can all get lucky a few days but it's the people who have them consistent results rather than the ones who just focus on daily weekly monthly goals so right now I'm gonna get the trading setup ready to be honest I thought there was a bit more of a desk than this however this is what we're gonna have to work with and it's still still pretty big maybe we could even take it next to the balcony that would be super super nice and got a TV there so we can also plug the laptop up let's hope the Wi-Fi is good actually I haven't even connected to the Wi-Fi yet struggles as a travel trader is making sure you have good Wi-Fi but every time I book an Airbnb I select that it must have Wi-Fi otherwise I cannot do this there is Wi-Fi I've got the password I'm gonna set it up now so guys this is my trading setup I have my MacBook with me and then I also bring along this really really nice Asus portable screen. This is 15 inches. It's actually bigger than my Mac screen. However, the quality is much better on my Mac, but to have this with me, it's super, super light. It compacts into a really small case and it's so easy to take with me anywhere I go. So guys, that is my trading setup. Everything I take with me, my Mac, my portable monitor. I also bring along a stand and a mouse because I just find it helps me, but if you guys want to travel and trade, it's certainly not essential, but for me, it definitely helps. And yeah, guys, let's go enjoy the day. So guys, welcome to Krakow in Poland. So far, super nice place. Checked into the Airbnb, all okay. Now currently having a little explore. I'm not trading today. I hope you guys can hear me properly. Uh, I'm not trading today because it's a Monday. I rarely trade Mondays. I feel like the markets need to find their feet. And I find that Mondays are pretty corrective. Rather than ruin your week by taking unnecessary losses on a Monday, wait until the markets develop and give you better opportunities. Such a quiet place at the minute. Everyone's isolating. Hey, what's going on guys? Just back at the Airbnb. Now I'm about to jump on the charts, see how Monday's played out. Like I said, I don't really like to jump in on Mondays because I like to let the market do its thing, find its feet from the weekend. I find even Monday, even going into Tuesday is gonna be fairly corrective. And with me and my style, which is swing trading, I like to let my positions do their thing. So once I have my entry, I simply let the trades run. So if I catch an entry Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then coming into Monday and Tuesday, most of the time they'll be running, doing their thing anyway. During the start of the week, I simply manage my positions, see how they're doing, maybe take some profits, maybe scale in, in the pullbacks during the corrective days. And then for the rest of the week, I will kind of let them do their thing. So guys, diving onto the chart. Here we're looking at Euro JP. Why euro against the Japanese yen these are my current positions I'm holding a portion of my shorts from here I then hedged some longs from here and then I then took an intraday play down into that one two three 
So let's just clean this up a bit. So what am I looking at now? Well, if we go onto the daily chart, I think we could see the euro against Japanese yen go either way at the minute. I don't think there's enough confluence to jump in too many trades right now. We can see today we've closed very, very bullish. Um, and this is why I closed my shorts around that one, two, three level. So I'm still holding a portion of my shorts from here. I'm now still holding long. So I have exposure to both sides of the market. So whatever happens from here, I'm not too bothered. I have exposure to both sides. I'm simply gonna wait for a little bit more price action to see what it wants to do. If on the four hourly we can reject this, I think from here we could have a potential another rollover. In terms of looking at the daily candle right now, it's looking very, very bullish. However, it is only 11 a.m. into the New York session. Therefore, I'm not gonna be judging the daily candle until we get that closure. Looking on the four hourly though, it is looking like a potential rollover, rollover from here if we get rejections from this level. There's been fairly big news for the Euro today, so this is why I stayed out of the markets. I'm simply gonna let Euro Japanese Yen do its thing. I'm just showing you guys my position. So I'm currently holding, so about 400 pips from the bottom. I took another 200 back up, and then I had a little intraday play last week for about 140 pips. So really, really big moves there. I'm more than happy to just keep holding my positions and wait until the market decides what it wants to do. So looking at gold, I'm watching gold very, very closely. You guys know I love to trade gold. Gold is my baby. Um, and at the minute, I'm simply just waiting for a breakout. I'm waiting until gold can decide what it wants to do because as of now, we're just getting squeezed and I think we're gonna have some sort of manipulation of fake outs before the real move to gain that liquidity. Fundamentally, gold could push up with rising COVID cases. Um, but then we also have the elections coming in a few weeks. So depending on how that goes, gold can kind of go either way, but at the minute we're fairly choppy. We can see we're correcting around this bottom trend line, which is showing that we could have signs of a rollover from here. However, when trading a triangle formation, nine times out of 10, we will see a false move before the real move. Uh, I dive massively into liquidity grabs, manipulation as part of the private community, but we will be taking this next big swing together. So I'm more than happy to wait for the breakout. I think if we break to the upside, we could easily come up to these highs, which would give us about a 1,600 pip move, which would be really, really nice. So that's what I will, that's what I will look for. I'll keep it nice and simple. I've got my levels. Uh, I will narrow it down to lower time frames when I see the right price action. But for now, I'm simply gonna wait for a daily breakout. So looking at pound yen, this is one that's very, very similar to gold. We can see we're pushing up in this upward channel. However, if we go down to the lower time frames, we can see we've got this counter trend line on here and we're actually just getting squeezed in here at the minute as well. So this is another one where I'm just simply waiting for the daily close, waiting for that breakout and then trading whichever direction we go in. Shorts from here are nice. This is a nice place of liquidity, which we rejected today that I was watching out for. Um, so that would have been a really nice 30 pip move. Not a huge move, I'm a swing trader. I like to catch the five, six, 700 pip moves where I can hold my position for a few days, weeks or months and live my life because that's what I like to do when I'm traveling. The main thing I do with trading is I swing trade. So once I've executed my position, I'll simply hold it for a few days to even a few weeks. That gives me the freedom of being able to do what I want, let my positions run. Once they've gone so far beyond my entry, it's simply monitoring, scaling in and seeing how they go. There's no, there's no stress once they've moved away. However, if I'm day trading and trying to scout, it's just not good for my personal mindset. I find that I get quite stressed. Sitting in front of the charts every day isn't what I want to be doing. So, especially when I'm traveling. If you guys want to travel and trade, I'm assuming you probably don't want to be sat in front of the charts every day. So this is how I do it. I swing trade, I catch the four, five, six, 700 pip moves and let my positions run and let them do their thing. Pound, Japanese yen, I'm simply waiting for a daily breakout Either way, this is my small counter trend line, but if we go into the daily, yeah, I'm simply waiting for a breakout of here or a breakout of here. Whichever way we break out, that's the position I will take. It's it, it's so important to keep it simple. If we break to the upside, I will simply go long. On the retest, if we break to the downside, I will just go short. It's, it, it is as simple as that. This year, we've caught hundreds and hundreds of pips on GJ, so I am more than happy to sit on my hands now, enjoy crack off, and let these trades do their thing. What I will do is when I see interesting price on a lower time frame, 
I might try to get involved with the really nice hedge position. So today, sells from here would have been nice. However, I was traveling, so I didn't catch this one. However, I gave this level out to the community, so hopefully you guys caught that. But yeah, this was a really, really nice level of liquidity where we've rejected at the minute. We've actually broken out of this trend line. However, we've broken out of it pretty correctively. In order for me to trade this as an actual breakout, I would have wanted to see an impulse, then a correction, and then another impulse. So. For me, this doji closure isn't enough for me to want to jump in the trade. In terms of looking at what we have now, now that we've dipped back into this level, price is telling me that we could have a potential rollover from here. So ideally what I would like to do tomorrow morning after the Asian session, look for shorts on the retest of this, risking off these highs, and then we could play this down for a really, really nice position. More of an intraday play, but what I will do with this one is I will hold on to my position however far we move down. Therefore, when I want to take the big swing, I will have that exposure. So I will hold a portion of my position so I'm covered for whichever the way the market wants to break out. So if I'm taking shorts from here, and then when we get to down here, I'm looking at longs. Well, I will jump in along on the rejection of the trend line, risking of previous structure, playing that back up. However, if we continue the push down, well then I'm covered because I've got shorts at the top. And I think this is a massive mistake in the retail industry. A lot of retailers will get their one to three, they'll fully close their position and get out of the market. But if I took a, sh if I take a short today, even going into tomorrow, and then look for longs, but price keeps pushing down, then I'm gonna kick myself because I could have had positions from the top. So what I will always do is part of my risk management, I will hold my position until the market tells me to get out. I'm not just gonna close my position because I like the look of the profits or I like the risk to reward. I will simply close partials and the rest will be an anchor for me to take the other side of the market with the zero risk to my balance. Shouldn't be wearing socks walking down there. They are slippery. Um, so it is half 7 a.m. London time. The London session is about to open. Let's go get some coffee and jump on the charts. So guys, that's the pound yen short that I explained yesterday. Currently running about 420 US dollars. I am soon going to start securing some profit with everything that's going on from Brexit talks and stuff like that. I don't want to be overexposed and I'm pretty happy with them profits from a little day trade. So probably close some profits out there and I will catch up with you guys soon. So guys, giving you an update on another trade I took. Uh, let's go into the daily. So this is Euro against the New Zealand dollar. And this is where I took sales today of that rejection of that 71%, which lined up with that 1.8 really, really nice. And then we can see we had that one, two, three, fourth drive to the high. From this rejections, that is when I then took my shorts. So that is another trade that is currently running about 500, which is really, really nice. And we closed 400 on pound yen. So I have another 500 there on Euro and NZD and I also took another sell on pounds New Zealand and pound Aussie dollar. So guys, let me show you the pound New Zealand. So this was my very, very nice entry, which I actually shared with the community as well. Very similar to the Euro New Zealand. We had that one, two, third drive to the highs. I took the sell based off that rejection. Uh, a really, really, really nice entry. Caught the wick perfectly and I'll simply be playing this down to this bottom trend line and potentially even lower to come down to these lows, which would give me around a 7% which is really really nice i have that running at 900 us dollars profit at the minute let me show you guys pound aussie so looking on the daily we had this really really key level of resistance where i was looking for reversals we also saw on this lower time frame if i go down to the hourly what i was simply waiting for was a break and retest of this to then continue low which i am now in i also took a risk entry up here looking on the four hourly we had this rejection and then this sort of bearish slowdown and then as i was watching it live i started to see signs of manipulation on the lower time frames after seeing this i started to take shorts here knowing that on the daily we are around that reversal region I have shorts here and I also have another short here running really, really nice. And I'm going to be playing that down to my first target of that 1.825 to potentially come down even lower into this trend line. And then from there, we will 
hold portions and see what happens. On top of the pound yen, which I closed at 400 US dollars today, we currently have 2,800 running on these pairs alone, which is really, really nice considering we are only two days into the trip. Uh, I am soon gonna secure some profits, go to break even, and the rest I'll simply let them do their thing. As you guys know, I'm a swing trader, so I'll hold my position for a few days, even to a few weeks. Now that I'm running about 3,000 in profit after securing that pound yen this morning, I'm now going to secure some of these profits and the rest I will let do their thing. But let's get on with the day, guys. It's a beautiful day outside. And yeah, let's have a good day, guys. So guys, gonna end the vlog there. So I hope you like this little insight into traveling and trading and getting into Krakow. Uh, I'll be doing another one soon, uh, kind of like a day in the life. So guys, make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll talk to you soon. Ooh.